We're very happy to have all of you who are here, who have, um, all of you have stayed over from the budget forum, those of you who are left, I'm grateful for it. Um, agenda revisions. We have, we have one rather significant one, which is to pull item 10.1, which is executive session for residency tuition waiver appeal um, to bring it up to right now. So um, the, the board will have to excuse itself and go um, to next door to the music room where we're going to hold a tuition waiver appeal and um, in executive session. So essentially it will be board members, um, the administrators who are involved and the, um, the student and the adults who are part of that student's life. Um, because it's an executive session, I just want thank you. I want to be um, formal about it. It's uh, it's under 16 BSA section 313A7 to consider a student's academic records. So um, I would entertain a motion to go into Dorothy moves. Lindy seconds. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay, we're going to go into it. There's still on item 10.1 that was moved up uh, to basically our first order of business. I would entertain a motion to grant the appeal for a tuition waiver. Dorothy moves. Marilyn seconds. Uh, we've had our discussion already. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The appeal is granted, the tuition waiver is granted. All right, we move on to item 2.0. Oh, sorry, pardon me. For the end of the school year, the request is for the end of the school year. Yes. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you for mm -hmm. the clarification. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're on to 2.0 policy. Chris, would you like to uh, take over? Sure. So, we have again multiple policies uh, that we work on um, this. Uh, past policy meeting, and um, any, I'm going to suggest that we maybe take it as a group, um, and if, if anybody has it, we want to go one by one. Last time we did it as a group. Yeah. Um, there, there are, uh, they're not all for adoption. Um, so let's, let's go one by one then. This incentive is all for adoption. Um, so, uh, any questions on B1 <coughs> substitute teacher policy? Chris, may I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, I've, I've noticed, I understand the, um, and, and am sympathetic with the desire to replace uh, male or female pronouns with a kind of gender neutral. Name, but um, I think it might work better if we were to try to, as much as possible, eliminate pro, um, pronouns wherever they can be eliminated. Because mm -hmm. I noticed, although not necessarily in B1, but on um, whatever policy is, is on page 28, um, there's, a, there's a case where the, um, where the they actually creates substantive confusion um, in the third paragraph down. This is, this is in policy B-22. Um, oh, sorry, it's in the second, wait a minute. No, the third paragraph. The third paragraph down. 
Um, if the issue is not resolved by involvement of the immediate supervisor, the complainant may refer the issue to the principal of the, dis of the school where the district employee primarily works for their review and decision. That there, there are three people who are three distinct people who have been mentioned, and that there could be construed as referring to all three of their review and decision. So I, I'm, this is just, uh, to the extent that you know, pronouns can be eliminated, mm -hmm. um, it's just a recommendation for clarity's sake. Instead of a pronoun, have the noun what that it's standing oh, for. Oh, okay. So, so uh, the principal will make it. If, if okay, maybe that's, that's fair, fair enough. Okay. So, any comments on a B1? Hearing none, we'll move on to B2. Any on B2, the uh, proposed changes there? Hearing none, we'll move on to B3. Any comments on B3? And what we were trying to do here was take into account um, uh, the involvement of potential prescription medications that are not illegal. So that's why we're striking illegal because it's not necessarily just illegal drugs that are involved. Um, to clarify that for our policy purposes. So it's just a spelling error written. Well, under the Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comment? Hearing none, um, we will move on to B3, for which there is no basic changes proposed. Uh, e B6, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, uh, basically just pronoun change. Uh, B7, uh, tobacco and vaping prohibition. So we might find this policy to include vaping, uh, which had not been previously included. And so uh, please give that your consideration and whether uh, that is a policy change that you want to see go into effect. Um, and be added. Okay, um, next on to um, B20. Uh, the is now recruiting selection appointment and background checks policy. I think the uh, primary uh, change there was to expand it to include subcontractors, not just contractors. Uh, next up, we have B20, uh, which is personal recruitment selection. No, it's the same one. Uh, next, we have professional development. Yeah, B22, so, um, oh, B22, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. No, okay. Okay. okay, thank you. This so one to B22, which is the public complaints about personnel and how they should be addressed. <coughs> section uh, starting with uh, that is entitled resolving complaints changing the second paragraph there second sentence at the very end the there to principal uh, for clarification purposes 
Any problem with that? Scott, do you have a problem with that? Very mm -hmm. Okay. So do you have the principal? Any other in terms of the procedure that's to be followed? Any other comments on that? Okay, so we'll move on to B31. Uh, the Educational Educator Supervision Evaluation and Probationary Teachers Policy. I'm sorry, B30, I skipped over. Uh, with no substantive changes. And then E31, the Educational uh, Supervisor and Supervision and Evaluation, Probationary Teachers. Any comment? Okay. Uh, next is B32. Personnel files. No substantive change proposed. B33, three, resignations. No substantive changes proposed. Uh, B35, a very long family medical leave policy, uh, which incorporates uh, basically the, the uh, procedures and the policy itself. Oh, no, sorry. Um, the uh, A34, board relations with school personnel. Chris, I wonder if I might break in at this point. I, I know this will come as a shock to my board member colleagues, but I made a mistake. Um, in, the, in the running order in the agenda, uh, I completely skipped over public comments. And if there's no objection from the board, uh, we have. You know, let's right. just finish this out. Do, do you want to do that? Okay. Okay. Any um, comment on the board relations with school personnel? Which I think is back for the second time. This one, the board can adopt it. This one we can. Okay. 
Any questions about it? No, I have two general questions. Sure. A little bit in the, in the first reading. So in the coming from medical leave and the educator supervision and probation, would, uh, would those policies go back to our lawyer too, just to make sure that we haven't done anything that might be not right? I don't know. It just the two of the other ones. Yeah. Zero model policies. Zero model. Yes. Oh, we are not making things. Those are not significant no. changes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Right. No. That it was the only two that I didn't know. Okay. So is there a motion to adopt A34 for relations with school personnel policy? Your, your chair instincts are asserting themselves again. Yeah. <laughs> but what Chris said, I should, just trying to get to the public comment, Scott. Appreciate it, Chris. <laughs> Pardon me, Joe? Joe moves. Jonas seconds. Any further discussion? This is to adopt A34, correct. All in favor of adopting A34, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the excruciating wait to repair my error has arrived. Um, so, uh, public comments taken out of, um, out of context, but um, still very welcome. I have an offer that I'd like to make to our school district. Um, I have been in touch with a Norton Gillingham fellow who would be willing to come to Vermont and teach in Norton Gillingham course to train our teachers. We would need to have 10 to 15 teachers interested in the course. I will pay for her flight to Vermont. I'll put her up. I'll drive her around. Um, what we would need is a place to hold the course and the interest of the teachers who would like to hold the course. And there's, of course, a fee for the teachers to take the, the course, um, which is written up in this paper. I have presented this to our, um, what is Jen's title? Director, director of Curriculum. To our Director of Curriculum and, um, and gotten and a pretty much a non-answer that they needed to consider this and this wasn't really the right time to do that or something like that. So I just thought I'd present that to the board and to our, our district in case anyone was interested. And then Mac, do you have a comment? Well, we had a letter to the board. Uh, so Mac and I had written a letter to, to the board. Um, this is a totally different, well, I guess it's a related topic. Uh, I've written a letter to the board proposing that um, when you're reviewing the curriculum, the reading curriculum, uh, the literacy curriculum, that there be people from the community involved in that if there was interest in people from the community being interested in that. Those are the two comments I wanted to make. Can I ask you? Yes. Can you just give a little um, more information about the, the so it's a it's a forty hour course. It would involve um, the cost per teacher is seven hundred and fifty dollars. The um, number of people involved would be ten to fifteen, and the director would be Joyce Bilgrave. She's an Orton Gillingham fellow who lives in Texas, and I I know her because. Um, she taught my daughter who has dyslexia and was involved in a camp that she did. She's a wonderful teacher. Thank you very much, Cindy. Thank you, Molly. Any other public comments before I go on to my next mistake? Okay, very good. Okay, um, wonderful. Then we're up to consent agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of February 5th and February 6th? So moved. Floor moves. Second. George seconds. Any changes to the minutes? No? You've had a chance to see them? They look good? All right. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes of February 5th and February 6th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay, do we have anyone in a position to move to approve the board orders?
So I move that we approve board orders uh, in the amount of $300,159.05. Is that Chris, do you mind doing that? Sure. Okay. Move that we approve board orders in the amount of $300,159.05 and also in the amount of $1,645. Chris is moved. Any seconds? I'll second. Four seconds. Any questions about the board orders? Yes. It's okay to you. Um, no? No. No? It's good? Okay. Very good. Then, all in favor of approving the board orders as laid out by Chris in his motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Wonderful. Okay. So, we're at um, item four then, book reflection. This is, I think, the last installment, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, are we going to use the full 30 minutes for that? Is it to the board? <laughs> <Yes>. <clears throat> I was assuming so. Okay. So, uh, Deborah Jen actually saved us with her climber cards. Oh, I love those. So we weren't sure how we were going to divide up into groups. Yeah. But Jen always says these were really cool cards in her bag, so this is what we're going to use to divide up into groups. Um, so we are talking about chapters 8 through 10. That's what we were supposed to have read for this evening. We will use the three levels of text protocol, which is good for all familiar with it. We've used it so a few times. So right. Do you mind if I, if I just stop you for a moment, please? Um, just to explain to um, members of the public what's going on at this point. Um, some of you might not be familiar. We've, um, we have been sort of reading as a group from uh, a book that Flora introduced us to called Equity from the Board to the Classroom. And this is a kind of retreat within the meeting. Um, and all of you are welcome to join um, in with us on this. You don't have to sit in the leisures where we're happy to have you participate in, um, in this. So please feel free to do so. Or, or if you'd rather not, that's fine too. It's entirely up to you. Kelly, please. Thank you. share that out within your small group. We'll be in groups of four. Um, so you'll share out the passage that you have selected and you'll say what you, why you chose that, why that's important to you, and the implications for our work. So each person will do that without the other group members interrupting. And then the rest of the group will get to talk about it um, while the presenter, if you will, listens. And then, um, each person in your group will get a chance to do that, and each round will take five minutes. So we'll be in our um, smaller groups for 20 minutes. I'll set my timer on my phone so that we keep us at a steady pace, and then we'll have about 10 minutes for our whole group to share out in the end. Questions about what we're doing? One passage from each chapter? Or from the whole? That's reading. From the whole okay. section, from eight okay. to 10, yeah. Okay. So on the cards that I passed out, you each have, there's a number. So you'll need to find three others with your same number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Find your numbers. Find your match. And then I'll set the time. A few minutes of the whole group debrief for folks to share out. I just something that I noticed as I moved around to each of the groups. So there were six groups, and at least four of you, four of the groups, I heard talking about the importance of trust and relationships. And so I think you probably all selected some pretty similar passages along those lines. Um, and so the common theme, but folks want to share out some highlights from your conversation. Top down doesn't work. I can, I, I, I can share with me. So well, first I just had a comment. I just want to congratulate the board and everybody for 
I am just pretty excited that we set this goal for ourselves and we managed to finish the book. And I know that we still need a retreat, but I just, I, I'm very proud of ourselves that, you know, we've become a learning community, almost. Okay, so we were in our little group of uh, four, we were talking about, uh, I, I'll just make three comments. So school boards must always remember that leadership starts from the top. Uh, and then we spend most of the time talking about, uh, you know, school culture supports educators of practicing effective and responsive instruction to meet the needs of the whole child and promotes the celebration of district, schools, and students' improvement. And the last one from there was, uh, collaborative structures keep the board informed so that they are in the right track as elected trustees of the district. So we send the message as a school board that we're engaged in learning in, in uh, collaboration and focus on student uh, outcomes. And I think our, you know, right now our, our budget is kind of a reflection of, of that, our commitment to best student outcomes and this could help us really once they come again, he said, a compass, with like the board being the compass of the, of the ship. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the superintendent and the principals are the captain and first mate, and the compass keeps us. No, true north. So our, briefly there, our group talked about the Kaizen model and just that idea about trust. Um, talked a little bit about it, you know, is it good to have a kind of a bottom-up grassroots approach to things and felt that is a good way to uh, uh, foster um, moving forward in a lot of ways. Um, on page, let's see, 113, the second to the last paragraph there. Um, I think this stood out was uh, school boards must bear in mind that their leadership impacts the district's culture because their leadership will impact staff behavior, which will in turn affect the organization's results. And uh, we talked a little bit about how, well, I mean, for me, I think that's totally true. Um, working at our schools, just kind of seeing how, even though kids aren't present at our meetings and you know uh, teachers aren't here all the time, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it does impact what happens within our buildings. For sure. Group A um, actually talked about the uh, same piece uh, that uh, employees who know the products best and therefore should have an opportunity to give feedback regarding how products should be improved. So we talked a great deal about that, that Kaizen model um, as uh, how it's happening in the school and what are some of the things that uh, that we can do and. and and foster so that those who are most affected by our decisions are those who are helping make them. And so that's sort of a big part of our conversation. And then trust and relationships, kind of a common theme. Good point. Uh, our group talked about collaboration and trust and building trust. And um, we also talked about providing equitable opportunities for students, and that doesn't always mean just throwing money as something. Um, we talked about this budget process and how that looked a little bit different than it has in previous years and the direction that we need to continue to go in. And then we had a nice conversation because we were so efficient and got done a little early about student voice and the importance of student voice and student leadership and what that looks like at different levels. Um, and we had towns in our group so we could uh, kind of pick his brain on some of those pieces, which was nice. No, 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 I was about to steal your thunder, Kelly. Any final words or? We'll give words of thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, I do 5.0, leading immediately into 5.1, student report. Towns, great to see you. Um, so, next week, 
is the February break, which everyone at school is very excited for. And uh, leading up to this, people have been choosing their classes for next year. This is a pre just preliminary choices, um, and they will, they will be entering those. You'll have to finish those before the start of break. Recently, we had our school concerts, which were very exciting, uh, especially because they had an emphasis this year on local Vermont composers, where every piece they played was uh, written by a Vermont composer, which was, uh, I got to attend the uh, concert for students, and it was very exciting to hear all the great music that's being produced in our state. Um, just th th that's it. <laughs> Not a lot has been going on. Vacation. <laughs> yes. That's all, that's all we're thinking about. Thanks, Thomas. I think um, next up is the superintendent report, being on page 62. So 62, uh, that is the beginning of my superintendent report, and you will see that I've highlighted information about our budget. We've been focusing a lot on that during the month of February. Um, I have had now a total of six presentations to faculty and staff in the schools. Thanks to the principals for organizing that for me. Uh, we also had our debut as a leadership team with Orca Media, and uh, it's a very low budget presentation, but we did our best just to try to get the word out, so it's streaming and available for you if you're interested. The annual report document, which I think all of you have, if not we have extra copies in the back, uh, turned out especially well. It is a, um, we, this is the second annual report for the district because there was one created for the end of last year. Uh, however, this one we had more time to prepare and we tried to encapsulate a lot of information about our schools and the improvements and the activities and the celebrations that have been going on throughout the course of the year, as well as important budget information. Um, there were some uh, comments, uh, just a few comments, um, requesting information that had been traditionally uh, provided in individual town reports. And um, because we have a single town report, we did have to make some decisions to um, make it a consistent document. Uh, however, anyone who has questions about any of the public data that was made available last year, please understand that we can, we'd be happy to provide that for you. So whether it be questions about staffing or detailed about the budget, you just have to reach out and make the request. It might take us a bit of time to, file, to have the reports prepared for you, but we're more than happy to provide any more detail that you are typically accustomed to reviewing uh, and make that available to you. So, um, don't forget to vote. You can vote tomorrow. You don't have to wait until March 3rd because in Vermont you can vote up to 45 days before. So I'm just not just suggesting how you might wish to vote, but be aware that that potential exists. Um, later in the agenda, you also have some information under board organization about the upcoming uh, preparation for town meeting, board operations. So in my report, I just listed here some information um, as to what you will be doing, uh, both at the upcoming meeting on March 2nd, which is our board annual meeting, uh, and then at town meeting on March 3rd is a reminder, you received an email from us recently which included a copy of this PowerPoint and we would really appreciate it if our individual board members could attend their town meetings and um, perhaps make a request of your town select board for a few minutes at the end of the meeting to speak about the school budget or to answer questions about the school budget if you are um, willing and able to do so. And our elementary principals, to the extent that possible, uh, will attend the town meetings, understanding that they would have to get permission to speak, but they would be available. And um, Stephen lives in Berlin, so I think that's probably where he'll end up, but it certainly is up to him <laughs> as far as U32 representation. Um, in any case, um, we're hoping that this transition year where we're not having a specific um, budget discussion uh, and in some cases perhaps a vote on the budget from the local school board is going to you know, be uh, a positive one and hopefully all the information we've prepared 
the brochures, the mailers, the slide presentation, et cetera, will help in that regard. Thank you. Uh, all right, another area for board organization is relating to the first meeting of the new board, which will be on March 4th. So in my report on the bottom of 62 and going up to 63, is a list of some of the typical decisions that a new board, a newly or reorganized board will need to be making. Um, we do have three, we have five new board members. There are three people that, uh, no, excuse me, two people who have um, put their name in to make the, um, to run for those positions, and everyone who's running is unopposed. But we do have three openings, and there may be some write in, so we encourage people if they're interested to do that. If uh, some of the positions are not filled, the board will have the responsibility of appointing new board members for the remainder of this school year through the February. And um, information about the warning was reviewed in our budget form, and it's also available online. Uh, the board had also uh, later on intends to talk about long range planning and setting retreat dates either in this meeting or the next meeting when the board uh, formally reorganizes. And um, I also wanted to bring a few things to your attention in the last board goal, which is regarding educational and academic outcomes. Um, and I'm from, I didn't have enough, I don't believe, for everyone, but the uh, proficiency based learning, personalized learning plan. Um, folder that's in front of most of you was recently shared uh, by Stephen and Jen at uh, faculty meetings and is being implemented and I'm sure Stephen will address that if you have questions um, regarding its implementation but it is uh, meant to help with the roadmap for our students so they have a better idea of what's expected of them prior to graduation so when you have a moment please browse through that it's also available online uh, let's see and also, it was mentioned already, but I'd like to just congratulate Ben Hines, a U32 teacher who was left as a Rowland Fellow, and not the first U32 teacher, but actually the second or third, I believe. And the third, yeah, yeah. So um, we're excited about his journey, and he'll be sharing back, and perhaps with the board at some point when he concludes his work. That is a, a very competitive um, opportunity for teachers to engage in professional development to where you know, they can essentially design a plan that's meaningful for them and then research and contribute back to the school community. So we're excited about the work that's underway and will be in the future. Uh, one more, the last topic I would like to mention is that uh, we, our leadership team or a large number of people on our leadership team attended a conference in December regarding school safety and security and we had a follow-up conversation at our last leadership team meeting and have, are now ready to uh, begin the process of moving forward with some expansions of our school-based uh, safety and security work. And uh, because of the nature of the information for safety reasons, we won't be discussing that in depth in open session, but at some point if the board would like an update, we'd be happy to schedule an executive session discussion. The reason for that is that public information might um, provide too much detail for anyone in the community um, as they become familiar with our uh, techniques for implementing school safety. Any questions? We have interviewed one consultant and we've reached out to uh, one other. We have not made a decision yet as to who we're going to proceed with. It's been recommended that a team of teachers might help us in forming the, um, in helping us to identify the criteria for how we're going to proceed with the literacy study. And um, we're looking forward to moving the work forward. It's, it is a process and we want to be sure that we have um, the, not only the proper individual who's going to be taking the lead, but also that we have input from staff and as we proceed. It is the first time in over 10 years, I believe two, in 11 years, that we have done something of this nature, so we want to do it thoughtfully and carefully. So I've seen on the board um, around the state involve other stakeholders. Um, so I would like you to thoughtfully consider having other stakeholders give input. Um, 
to this conversation. I guess my further question is, in, in looking at the consultant, have you made decisions of what that consultant is looking at? What, what are your kind of guiding factors for this right now? That's what we're identifying now, and we would look for input from our, of course, our administration and our literacy, our teachers of literacy as well, and helping us to guide that. If you have, I don't know if any of the board members here were involved in the um, uh, IFR pro progress, which was a another external audit. Okay, so the one place that I see that parents or other committee members might fit in would be in the actual implementation, where we'd be seeking feedback from a variety of people, uh, including parents or community members who have an interest, students, of course. Um, and one correction I wanted to make is that we intend to make this a K-12 audit as opposed to K-8, so it will extend up through high school. So I do see a role, um, and it's and it's an exciting program, which we excuse me, an exciting effort, and we're looking forward to um, not only that work but also the result of our community needs assessment, comprehensive needs assessment, which I think will go hand in hand with this work. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, when, when would this audit take place? We have not identified a time frame. Uh, I, we were hoping before the end of the school year, but we will, we've not identified the time frame yet. Well, that will depend on the consultant's availability. Okay, and the audit would um, generate findings that would then be evaluated for improving the ministry program? Correct. We hope to do a strengths based approach, asset based approach where we're going to be looking for what we're doing well and what we need to improve, and we're going to be, in general, seeking feedback about uh, the curriculum, uh, our performance indicators, and you know, those types of how well are we implementing those areas. So we're not looking at, uh, as a result, we weren't anticipating a specific program might be suggested, but rather a set of strategies that would lead us to professional development uh, over time to improve teachers' abilities and knowledge base that could result in improved outcomes. That's essentially um, the long-range, you know, anticipated goal. Do, do, would we anticipate a written report? Oh, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Of course, yeah. <coughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, any further questions on the superintendent's report? If not, we can move on to the leadership team's report. There are a couple of items here that are worthy of discussion, I believe, at least a couple. And what I would suggest, if there's no objection, is to address the recommendation about professional development time first. Um, you've all had a chance to check that out. Um, do you, uh, what do you think? Where do we put it in the calendar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are there, is there any, uh, are there any questions about it? Um, does it look good to you? Acceptable? Okay. Well, um, explain a little bit more of what you mean uh, half a day, and whether it's the first half or the second half. I'm assuming the second half of the day. Um, but uh, and that would, take, would that take the place of the early release? Yeah. Wednesdays? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, what struck me is whether uh, it goes uh, difficulty to parents for daycare, child care, uh, since it's a much longer period of time uh, than the early releases now, and whether there are any contingency plans to um, address that. I think, oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a lot of details, in, and I think there's a lot of details and logistics that haven't been worked out. Um, that would need to be worked out, one of which would be talking with families and finding out the impact on families for this change. Um, we've talked about this as a leadership team for a few years for the reasons that were shared here, because we're able to do work within our buildings, but we found that doesn't allow us time to do work across buildings and for any sort of vertical alignment or working with colleagues, especially in our smaller schools where there may be you know, a singleton teacher for each grade who's never able to work with colleagues in that same grade level. Um, but there's a lot of details. This was planting the seed to see you know, what you thought about it. And I know, Deborah, you wanted to share um, a conversation you recently also had about it. Um, and just to get your thoughts to see if we should do some more work to bring back to you. 
um, just, you talked about a single bus run. What does that mean? Potentially. Uh, so, so another thing that we thought might be a, a nice opportunity to explore with this, we've talked about the single bus run and, and five days a week all year round seemed like a really daunting thing to take on and we thought maybe trying it once a month might be um, a, a good pilot or, or just a trial. So what I think it would look like is the buses would pick students up at U32 and then head directly to the elementary schools and that would all have to be timed out so that it would be one single run home. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. Any more questions on this? Is there a consensus among board members that this is a good idea? Nodding of heads? Does anybody think it's a bad idea? I'd like to share that I've worked in a district that did this, and once the schedule's out, the daycares adapt, and the families adapt to, generally, if they're given enough notice, and the teachers were able to, right now with the early release, there's not really time to travel from Callis to Doty or whatever, because it's almost time to go home. This allows that. It also allowed us to bring um, specialists from outside for a chunk of time, so that half day that you could pay, and have that kind of professional development, which the early release doesn't do as well. So um, I, I'm looking at it and thinking, ooh, that, that's a good thing for professional development, as well as the one bus run scares people. But um, another district where I worked, we did that and the elementary sat in the front of the bus and the high school sat in the back and there were cameras and it was, you know, assigned seating kind of thing and it seemed to work and this was a long time ago. Um, so probably 18, 15 years ago or so um, in a district that had several elementaries and one high school. Thank you, Lenny. So uh, otherwise, Green light for going forward with this. Okay, great. Can I share something? Please. I, I work with two different construction teams right now, and we know the schedule of the guys, and two, two of them have we know, early release, and we know that Tuesdays we can't have any afternoon meetings, and everything is done by 1.30. And it, so, it, you know, we, it, even employers adapt. You know, I'm not So employer, but we all, if it's a team, and we're all like, that's important. So, so I would assume that we can help in some way or try to find a way in some way to um, right? Sorry. Um, so now that we fund community connections and thinking about a way that we can help to fund to support this. Dave. Susan, um, I'm hearing that both employers and daycares adapt. Does that mean that we're bringing up school start times again? <laughs> <laughs> Future agenda items. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much, everyone. Next, the other sort of discussion piece in the leadership team report is the music program discussion, which comes up front on page 66. I think just by way of background, I think most, if not all of you, remember that uh, the last time we were out in the field, as it were, at um, Aaron's Diggs in Berlin, uh, Chris proposed a motion, um, a, a classic Chris McVeigh motion, that um, I will not be able to repeat from memory um, because of its 
subtlety and um, meaningness. But Chris, do you remember precisely what you said? It was a motion to dedicate, I think, $60,000 um, out of the fund balance for creating a strings program in the district. Um, but it had contingencies attached to it, including working at the state level um, for uh, for teachers. Um, so that was the, the uh, focus of the motion. Yes, and um, thank you. Sure. And my understanding is that basically we were trying to create an opportunity. Um, it's certainly not my intention to force anybody to do anything that they, that they don't want to do. Um, that's the state's thing. But it is an, it is an opportunity that seemed um, feasible, timely, cheap, and um, you know, perhaps very beneficial for the children in our elementary schools. Um, in the description, it's clear that there's, uh, it doesn't seem to satisfy the priorities that have been arrived at. Um, so I'm just curious as to what you all think. Seems like the response is that there's not a um, shared, aligned vision of a music program across the district. Uh, the question is, um, how much time would it take to develop one, um, and how would it be developed? Um, because if that's one of the things that you're you're saying we can't do the music program, or should it be because we don't have that, then how can that be that aspect be accomplished? Um, and um, is, it, is there even a plan to develop a shared vision of a music program across the district? Uh, and if, it, if it, there is a plan, um, how long will it take to implement it? Um, you know, there's another table of administrators over there, just so <laughs> I can see you guys better. <laughs> And 
Um, many of the questions we asked, they had they had responses for, and some um, they recognized that they need to get back together as a music department um, district wide to have some more conversation. Um, certainly, I think everyone recognizes we need to get more on the same page in regards to all of music um, in our buildings. I think as far as timeline goes, one of our full-time music teachers is out on maternity leave until spring, which kind of pauses the work of the music teachers for some time. Um, and as we were talking, I think a great opportunity for the music teachers to really do that work together would be at curriculum camp, which is in June. Um, so that's just kind of a, a short-term timeline for when the work, I think, could get, get kicked off. Is that, is that a goal? I believe that that is how we had left it. Yeah. yeah. And our discussions, just, just as a, a you know, for, for that, uh, in the deliberations that we had around the budget was that this was a next year budget item. You know, if we were thinking about that. But I would also point to the to the write up in the about the, the, the report, the leadership team. Um, you know, there are other things that we also need to consider as well, like the health education, um, languages, you know, there's some other things that need to be all brought together in kind of one bigger discussion as to how we might do those. So what is it um, does it make sense to make all of those discussions together? As opposed to music as, as one aspect and then these others um, as separate aspects? Because if you're, I think as a leadership team, we do need to look at them all. We need to look at the big picture, and, and it would include all three of those, and not just strings as its own. You know, I was a little bit struck by the uh, statement that there uh, the uh, there is in a health education educator in each school and there's required to be one. Yep. Um, so is there, I mean, I think this is the first that I'm, I think this is the first that, uh, at least I'm aware of that, that we haven't had, we haven't had that responsibility as a, as a district. Um, and we, I, I don't remember that coming up in the budget discussions uh, this year. Um, so how do we, um, how do we address that? Um. So for the first time in last year's report card, the health standards were um, in the report card for the first time. And those of you who are parents in some of the elementary schools may have noticed they're playing or there's not much on there. Um, and we've been talking as a leadership team about that. One of the things that, that um, Endeavor and I had this conversation just this morning is looking at our teachers and to see who, who could be licensed in health. And, how does that make sense? Um, you know, just just for example, at East Montclair, talking with my PE teacher and making steps to get him licensed mm -hmm. um, as a health educator. Okay, that, that's East Montclair that doesn't address I think, and I think similar conversations are happening in other buildings. Um, okay. One of our elementary schools has a licensed health educator. Three um, of the other buildings, I think, are in this in that three of you not. Right, and we, we also, in the short term, um, we can utilize our school nurse to deliver in the curriculum. It's not as extensive because it can't be as regular and frequent. Our school nurses are not full-time in our elementary schools. Um, but there is a path to uh, for our physical education teachers to become licensed, and it's about a 12 credit endorsement in order to achieve that. So we have been reaching out and requiring for requesting better Mm -hmm. Proceed with that, and once they have initiated the work, they hold what we call a provisional license, and that provisional license enables them to teach courses. So we can initiate that as soon as next fall and move the enforcement conversations forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you think it's possible to have a, a, um, just an update in May? Of course. In our May meeting, just to see what these are. All, all of these issues are then yeah. yeah um anybody else have thoughts on this yeah. to me um I, I think you know if we for me it's all about we have an opportunity um that has come up uh what seems like a really interesting idea uh, exactly on the kaizen model that we were reading about 
um, coming up from the people that are actually doing the work. And um, in this particular case, the people who are doing it represent the entire program. So from, um, from my perspective, it's sort of like, how do, we, how do we capture the value that's there? How do we capture the maximum amount of talent and energy and creativity that we have in our people when, when this opportunity arises? Is the system, I mean, we're supposed to be about flexible pathways, but it does sound a little bit inflexible to me if we have to, you know, talk about strings in the same context as the health program and, the, and foreign languages. Um, it, it's, it becomes, I, I, I know one has to look at everything globally, but when opportunities arise, um, I think it's also important to be able to, to seize them, to recognize them, and seize them on the way. And I, want, I would like for us to have the capacity to support those, you know, those opportunities that arise. Um, we, can't, we can't make them happen though. They have to be picked up on by, you know, by, the, by the structure. And if they're not, then there's, then there's no point. But it just makes me worry a little bit that the structure itself is perhaps not as responsive as um, would be optimal. I, I, well, first, I want to thank them for having that meeting with the, both the both teachers and and, and I think the both uh, and and I don't represent the entire teachers, right? Because there's elementary music, elementary music teachers. But I think uh, I don't. From what I read here, I don't think that what they're saying is that this is not an opportunity that they don't want to look at. What they're saying is that we need to prioritize. So they. We need to set our priorities and be be mindful of what our uh, how how we are spending our resources. But they're not saying this is something that will never happen. So we have to be sometimes opportunities. You you look at them, you study them, and then you implement them so that at the end it would be what is best for kids. But to just throw an opportunity in right now that could derail some other work or that it doesn't have enough buying because there's the systems have been put in place to make that opportunity successful. I'd rather have that opportunity come come later because I think we are a district that really supports the arts and the music and we take that really serious and, and I feel like the leadership takes that really serious language and stuff. So I'd rather have it be meaningful than just a, try to make it happen now just to make it happen because there is not it's not there. So so I appreciate that you guys are looking into it in more detail. And I also think that we have to be careful about you know, how we set our expectations because we have a broader conversation to have sort of like what Stephen was saying of how to how to prioritize and and to me you know that is their department. We gave them a, you know an idea was proposed to us, they looked at it, and, and that's our department just to you know, maybe think outside the box, present the idea, and if it's not as, uh, I don't see it as not being flexible. That's what I want to say. Um, I, I, I read this, and I, I get and from listening. There are, it sounds like we have a fairly long list of things that we want to look at and prioritize and make sure we have equity for everybody. And it just seems to me like we're kicking the can down the road because that's going to take a long time to decide how that's all going to happen. We have this opportunity to try this. Um, I appreciate the fact that the music and all the different elementary schools is handled differently and I think um, that those, those music teachers and the staff involved need to be given some time to sit down and see how they can make that work, make the music work, to have the strings. But in a sense, we're, we're, we're 
blocking their, that's a heavy term to use, his ability to be in the streams. Uh, I understand if they haven't had some experience when they get to U32, the strings program is not open to them. So I think that we're cutting off um, a, a, an opportunity for some kids. And we have this short opportunity, and maybe, maybe it won't work. But what's wrong with trying to trying to make it work? It's small, and and that would give us a plan on making other small things work when the opportunity comes up. But I'm afraid that we'll get so buried in this list of things that we have to prioritize that not a lot will happen very quickly. Through this process of talking about this, we discovered that we, there is a statutory gap in our instruction. We've gone into the Okay. That's something the board has never talked about in my time here. Um, I don't think this is about music. I think it's a great program. It would be great. This is how we make decisions about what to do. This is how this is about how we do that prioritizing and how we identify what the most important things that we need to do are and then how to get them into place. Right? I don't think not doing this, you know, I mean, we, we just talked a lot about trust, right? And we put this question to the people who we entrusted to give us accurate information. They've given us their recommendation. Of all the programs that I would support, Strings would be one of them because my children, uh, two of the three of them, were actively involved in playing through their school careers and into college. Um, I think that I wanted to just comment about a, a, a note that Dorothy had made. We did discover that incoming seventh graders are able to begin Strings instruction. That hadn't been the case in the past, but it is now. Uh, one of the, the things that I've been thinking about as I've heard from folks is that there might be a middle ground. I think there's a sufficient amount of interest in the part of the board. And I wondered if we might want to turn this question back to the teachers about possibly a summer strings program followed by either a pilot or an after school opportunity. Um, the worry I have though about in moving full forward with this without some more careful planning is that we do have two elementary schools that don't have individual lessons for band. And I'm not certain if the board's aware of that. That had it evolved over time based on changes in staffing. So when we talk about adding strings instruction, we would need to recognize the fact that both, I believe it's Callis and East Montpelier do not have individual lessons during the school day for band instruments. Nor um, Berlin, right? Nor Berlin, uh, I'm not sure. You do have it during the day, I thought so. So two of the five do not. So again, this is this conversation brought up more discussion about the variations among our schools, but um, it is important to keep in mind, I think, if we're going to be making this extension, we should be considering band instruments too. Uh, I certainly am in favor of making a joyful noise in general. Uh, a joyful noise. Biblical reference, music. Yeah. Um, the. I, I'm just hoping that whenever, you know, whenever it's possible to do something good, that will enhance the quality of students' experiences. That um, this board will be able to move to support it, and that the system will be able to. Uh, to support it as well. Um, I understand it's not easy, but um, I think you know if the if the will is there, then the way it can be found. You are um, constantly uh, incorporating language and music 
together? Um, are they really together, or are they separate in terms of scheduling issues? You mean in terms of things that we care about and yeah, want to well, not, not just care about, but in terms of a scheduling issue. Um, are they both, do they both, both present the same type of scheduling issues, or are they separate scheduling issues? They're sort of, oh, well, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I know at Callis, one of the things that we could eat, World language could easily fit within global citizenship at the elementary level. And we do have time blocked out in all, all of our schedules. Um, it might look different in each building, but we do have commitments of time where it could take some of that. It would also mean shifting the priorities of what we're going to address within global citizenship if we're going to add world language. So yes, it would have an impact on our schedules. The music schedule would not, um, it would be, it would it'd be impacted in a different way. Um, Again, thinking just about the lens here at Callis, we do have some wonderful music educators here at Callis, and they provide an opportunity for band, the general music, and chorus. And but they're one person, and so if we were to bring in um, an opportunity for someone, an additional person, to offer a third option. It, it's beyond just finding a separate space, which could be tricky in a small building, um, but it, it's also about finding times when kids who are interested and are in different classrooms can be pulled without pulling from good, you know, first, you know, universal instruction and being able to um, access that programming. Then we have to start making decisions about, can you take a band and a chorus? Can you take journal music in a band? Like, do you see what I'm saying? It just, it brings up a lot of other questions. They're good questions to have. They're all a good conversation. Um, but how, I, it's more than just logistics. It's about what are the priorities. And um, since I've had, like, you've given me a chance to talk, I just want to come back to something that um, I heard Jonas say, which was about trust and relationships and that we started our conversation earlier today. So I know about that. Um, I think the leadership team very much wants to feel like we're in alignment with the board and while I wasn't at the last meeting Jody shared some of the thoughts that came up from the last board meeting and it sounded like the board has that same appetite I think for connecting with our buildings and this is an opportunity that if we want to move our structures and make our structure uh, be more focused on student outcomes I think that we need to learn how to work together and know that if you ask us for input that we can give it to you and that you're going to receive it. it I'm not saying don't push back or don't ask questions but we want to know that there's value in giving you feedback too. Does that make sense? Well, I, 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 am I, is there anything that I'm missing folks? I think okay. we've both been missing in a very direct and right. open way. I mean, I mean that was great mm -hmm. um, things but I mean, feedback is important. Otherwise, yeah. we're both dealing with uh, lack of information, actually, yeah. which is not good for anyone. Um, so, so um, I, I think I would want to propose that we have a timeline uh, in terms of uh, trying to make uh, the strings program a uh, reality. Uh, and what would, make, what would be a sensible timeline uh, for a report back to the board on what it would take? Okay, I don't want to speak for everyone. See, not, but, so now, you know, blame, I would, but I would blame love these guys, but now I'm looking in this okay. <laughs> okay. I would love to be able to um, have the leadership team have a chance to talk about it, but I think we've talked a lot already about the option, the opportunities for curriculum camp that we already have scheduled, where we can bring all of our music educators, and not just a few, but all of them together, and talk about what is your vision for a comprehensive pre-K to graduation music program. How do we make all things um, accessible and equitable, all those opportunities? How do we make sure that the program is rich in terms of a variety of programming? And I don't think that, that the, the job of the leadership team is to decide what that is. It's to say those folks with the boots on the ground, those music educators, they need to come back to us and say, where, where are the gaps? Where, are the, where is the strength? And help us identify what that timeline is. I think everyone would say, I don't think I'm reaching here to talk about on behalf of music educators. I think they would all say that there's a value in this conversation. They would all find value in this conversation. Um, but I think if we talk about giving them time in June during curriculum camp to address what is a, a, an effective and healthy timeline over all of next year, um, we maybe could come back with a proposal about what the following year would look like. So could we uh, uh, count on something in August? 
a plan? Yeah. To, or to start? Because yeah, I think you should. So at least a basic outline of something that we can work with. I mean, if you're talking about. I think you could come up with a plan in August, absolutely. We could probably even share it with you with the retreat if you have one in the summer. Is that okay? What? No. Yes. And Gillian signed up for it. I just signed her up for it. I think, but I think addressing your thing about this. So, uh, world language has been identified. Health is a mandate. And so when you think about it also, I mean, I have, I have my fault. I have effort that I'm, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. But it's, but, but I don't have health. And I don't have language. So when you think about, um, I've, been, I've been struggling with the master schedule. And I know that Kat probably also struggles with this. We have part-time people who we have to piece in, who have different jobs in different places. And so there's a certain amount of rigidity in the schedule. So instead of, uh, instead of changing the master schedule to accommodate strings and then change the master schedule again, to find out what it is, get the music teachers talking with each other, figuring out what are some creative ways, whether or not it's camp, whether or not it's after school opportunities, whether or not, now I'm just spitballing ideas if you want to yell at me, but uh, whether or not it's music teachers visiting other schools and sharing and doing doing demonstrations at, at the, you know, is Michael? Yeah. Michael's still here. Please come to work on Friday. Uh, you know, I've said this, but maybe Michael goes and comes to Callis or goes someplace else and, and does a demonstration about strings, sort of introducing those things. And then, so that we're not, because the kids need the routine and the rhythm and the changing the schedule is so hard. There, and there's so many pieces that shift and change. It's not that they're dependent on each other, but they can do it all at once and say, okay, this is what we're going to do to move music forward. This is what we're going to do to bring the whole music department together. And we probably better manage compliance with health at the same time to then take that time next year to really thoughtfully and blandly say, this is how we're going to fit in health. This is what our health curriculum is going to look like. Uh, this is how we're going to fit in a world language. This is what our world language curriculum like so that then we just have to do it once. Does that? And I think that we could probably over the summer take a stab at, at what that would look like, or or I could just keep volunteering Michael to do things. And <laughs> do also. One um, uh, one thing I think might be helpful. The leadership team about a year ago sat down and looked at the school day and how many minutes are in a school day and all that we try to accomplish in that school day, thinking about how many minutes you know for literacy and how many minutes should we have for math and for interventions and global studies and um, all of the arts. And I'm wondering if if a first next step might be for the March report we we look at that again as a leadership team and kind of share with you what the best practice or what the thoughts are around, you know, minutes per, per um, subject per day and kind of what that looks like in a schedule just to give kind of the global picture that I was talking about earlier and needing to kind of look at the whole big picture and, and you know, and why this is such a struggle for us because it, you know, all of these ideas are wonderful and I think it, honestly, much of it comes down to prioritizing and so many minutes a day and needing to make sure that we're doing everything that we need to be doing um, within those minutes. And, and so I'm, I'm wondering if it might be helpful to you to just kind of see what the leadership team, kind of what that, what we had talked about a year ago and maybe update that and include all of these pieces and what that would look like. You know, is there a sense that uh, the day should be extended? I think the first step will be to share with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it will be helpful for you to see what what the reality is in the number of minutes it takes to do all of it. But is there a conversation about the day should be longer? We've had that conversation yeah. many times. Okay. And, and what would, is the general sensitive to how much time? 
So I, I think that you're going to want to have a negotiating committee conversation about that before you start talking about that in minutes. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I think that that's certainly a conversation we need to have, but that's a big one. And even, be, even if we're going to talk about extending the school day, we'd still want to have the conversation about priorities because I think that, and maybe it would be helpful for you to see not just what it looks like in general, but what it looks like in each of our buildings, like how many minutes are spent in music instruction, how many minutes are spent in PE and health, how many minutes are spent in literacy or reading versus writing. Um, and it looks a little bit different in each of our buildings, and I think it might highlight for you in a way that these conversations can't that there is some real disparity between um, the opportunities that kids have in each of our buildings. And I think you can see it once they hit U32. So, so many discussions to be continued, I think, um, when we're in a fresher state of mind. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Shall we move on then to negotiations, actually, 5.4? because after it is then it is then this will go into effect as as part of the agreement.
Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Very good. Thanks a lot, Jens. <coughs> so, board operations. Um, I think, Deborah, you've, you've touched on some of these. Do you want to? <coughs> yes, I think I've reviewed these briefly. If you wouldn't mind returning to my report, which starts on page 62, uh, just to be sure everyone is in uh, understanding of these matters. So, for the first time as a merged district, we're going to hold an annual meeting in lieu of presentations. And, formal presentations at town meeting. And that annual meeting is going to be preceded by a one-hour dinner, which will be hosted by our food service staff at U32 and in the cafeteria at U32. And we have invited all of our former board members from the prior year and our administrators and all of you, of course. We hope that you'll be able to join. And we will be providing certificates, which include the years of service to all of our former members or members who may be departing the board. And, um, at least we have one I know of, Vera, this year. Uh, so um, following the wonderful dinner, we expect to have um, another budget presentation opportunity, another information meeting, so that members of the public can come. Any um, election or um, voting of articles will occur by Australian ballot, so there will not be any action taken during that time. Anyone have questions about the March 2nd meeting? I resent everyone an invitation, so hopefully you have it on your calendar. Okay, great. Uh, the next one was the um, work on town meeting day, which I've mentioned everyone's received an electronic copy of the slides, and um, as well as our administrative team, so we're hopeful that they'll be on hand to support you as you have your town meeting discussions at each school. And again, I'd urge you, if you haven't done so already, to reach out to the years of town select board um, members and be sure that they are willing to provide you with some time to speak to the school budget at your local town meetings because there is not going to be a formal time on the agenda for this. It would have to go under your other discussion. You might have questions about the slide presentation. I know the one we've seen tonight is very similar to the one that's been presented in the past. Um, just for your information, um, in the past, I've dropped by to visit town meetings at Superdown, and I will do that, but I don't know that I'll get to all of them in the time that you happen to be discussing this. Uh, but Lori and I will be available for any phone calls if you have a, if you need to phone a friend opportunity um, for questions that arise that you can't answer during that meeting. Uh, so feel free to give us a ring and let us know. Okay. And then the next meeting, or the next topic, um, has to do with our upcoming reorganization meeting, which I've touched on also. And that meeting will be um, the time in which we re-elect officers for the board and um, determine our committees, as well as assign committees and alternate uh, committee members. And that information, is, along with other operational decisions, is listed here. Now, I know in our last meeting we had discussed a board retreat or two, and um, I'm not certain if you would like to, I think Floor had, had some comments about that. Would you like to discuss that with the board? I, I was thinking that we would wait until we have the new members on the board so that we can count on their calendar too and we can start the process together if that works yeah. for everybody. Is there a big hand there? Thank you, Floor. Yes. Deborah, that's it? Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. So, um, item seven, finance. The technology bid for a wide area network. That is what WAN stands for. Okay, thank you, Keith. And fiber expansion on page 70. We'll turn it over to you, Keith, for this one. Should be fairly quick. So you remember that we had a discussion about this earlier um, in the school year, this past fall, that this was um, something that we hope to do for next year. Um, and you can see from the, the chart here, you know, sort of the discrepancies that, that currently exist and sort of where we hope to um, even things out um, and bump up some of the bandwidth at U32 as well. 
Um, so we did go through the E-rate process. Um, this is a E-rate's a federal program um, that provides funding for schools and libraries for uh, internet access and network infrastructure. Um, so we went through the bidding process. We got four bids back. Um, you can see all the vendors here. Um, we did uh, an analysis. Um, even though Comcast does show that it's the lowest bid, we are recommending First Light because we disqualified Comcast. Um, they did not respond in the terms that we were hoping to see. So that's it. Questions? Is this a three-year contract? This is a three-year contract. And is, is it uh, forty-four thousand each year? It is forty-four thousand each year. And does that will that fluctuate? It could, theoretically. Um, I think that the E-rate reimbursement is based on our uh, free and reduced percentages uh, across the district. And I wouldn't anticipate those to fluctuate a whole lot. So I would, I would expect that that is going to be the number for all three years. And has the uh, experience so far with life, uh, first life been a good one? We do already have contracts with them. Um, I would say that they've been fine. Um, I, I, we haven't had any serious issues to with them. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, sir. Sorry, Keith, why would we not go with the lowest bid? The lowest bid. So consolidated, the first year, um, you can see they included some estimated build costs. Um, it is true, if you do look at the full three year, um, they are slightly lower when you get to that third year. However, we have two more years on our existing contracts with First Light, and to get out of those contracts, compared to the, the cost of consolidated would be prohibitive. So in the end, we wouldn't really come out ahead because we're still on the hook for those two years. Whereas if we, if we go with First Light, we basically just roll those two-year contracts into these new three-year contracts, and then we're done. So it's a three-year, it's not really five-year. It's not five-year. It's it, we're replacing the the existing contracts, we have two more years left okay. on a five-year contract. Okay. If we go with First Light now, we're basically just, we'll have a three-year contract starting on July 1st of this year, and it will end July 1st, 2023. Is there a um, end, or not, end of not renewing with them after three years? Is there any hardware that gets you moved? Yes. The, the actual um, device that provides the, the service to our equipment could potentially be removed. Often, after the end of these contracts, it's not. I have to go with a new provider, but we wouldn't use that hardware anyway. It would be, the new provider would come in with, with new equipment to provide service. Okay, thank you. I can't speak to the actual cost to break the contract. I haven't asked that question to First Light. Um, I, can, I can look at the, the cost to continue. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying we should go with you know, the lowest feasible, lowest cost feasible bid. That's just a pretty big delta.
Right. I think the question could certainly be asked in first line what the cost would be to break that contract. Um, as it stands right now, it looks like the cost to continue those contracts um, would be approximately fifty, just over fifty thousand dollars for first line to do. Over the two years, yes. So the, the cost to break the contract may be less than that. Yep. Um, but given that we are on the hook for those additional two years at $26,000 sure. each year. I mean, the, 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 there's, there's benefit in going with the email. There's going with the email is going to be a good solution. Right? And I think, you know, I've had my it's all in one fair point. Yes. Um. <laughs> so, so I mean, so just I think it's it's given the totality of the circumstances. I, I agree that long term, if we got out to that third year, you know, yes, we we would be ahead if we would break that contract right now. Or if we didn't have, if we were coming up to the end of the contract, I think we probably would have gone a different direction. But I think the other thing to keep in mind too with the consolidated is they gave us some estimated build-out costs. And I have some concerns about that. It's, it's not that I don't believe them, but my experience is that that's a lower, that's the low best case scenario number that's not we're going to come in under that number. So, just, yeah. Great. Thanks. All right. Um, I will entertain, of course. Yeah, all right. But uh, the I just wanted to thank Keith and Lori for the analysis of reviewing the bids uh, and. Uh, also, the fact is that our proposed proposal to the board is within the district budget as proposed. Uh, it's actually slightly under budget for the coming year. So thank you both for the preparation of all the work. Any of you who have worked with federal programs and, and forums that are associated with them know how just how very detailed and challenging some of these programs are. It's a wonderful opportunity as well to bring internet and a enhanced broadband to all of our schools, um, but it was a, a quite a lot of effort. So thank you both for that work. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, now I will not entertain myself, but entertain a motion to approve this. Wonderful. Chris moves. Second. Second. Dorothy seconds. Very good. Any further discussion? If not, ready for a vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Okay. So, um, personnel. Hires, resignations, retirements. We have one, I believe. Stephen might have to answer the question uh, as to why we have a person leaving, but um, one of our teachers is resigning and moving to Rhode Island at the conclusion of the school year at the Cal Brophy, and we unfortunately will need to seek your um, approval for that, an English teacher at U32. Anything you'd like to say about, other than that we're sad to see a very talented person leave our ranks? And, 
I would not say just a talented person in this. This is quite possibly one of the strongest new teachers that I've ever hired in my career. Um, she was a phenomenal teacher from the very first minute that we met her, straight out of St. Mike's. And so it was, it's, a, it's a heartbreaker, but this is a move for her personally. Um, she is certainly heartbroken to leave us as well. Um, and just, I think as a great aside for, for what kind of teacher this is, is that I ran into her in the farmer's market downtown um, this last summer, and her mother was there. And her mother would not stop hugging me and thanking me for hiring her. And all I could say to her was, but you, don't, you obviously don't know how good your daughter is because this was not a hard decision. Um, she's a fantastic teacher. She will be a great uh, teacher no matter where she goes, but it's certainly um, a loss for us. Um, so, which was great. Thanks. 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 So I have one addition, and I apologize that I don't have the document here, but it's a fairly brief um, point one FTE for Heather Clark Warner at U32 to serve as a uh, an additional course to her repertoire this year for the Zenith program. So if you wouldn't mind um, approving that as well, and it's approximately a five thousand dollar expense. I apologize for not having the document. Motion. Accept the resignation of Abby with the appreciation and yeah. wishing her well for all her contributions. She came in to fill very big shoes at school and sure did that. <laughs> At this point, we're on future agenda items, and we have them listed basically just to show that we're thinking about them, and uh, I, I think renaming of the district, we can get to at some later point. Um, solar power discretion. On, on the rest of these, what I'm maybe hoping is just for a show of hands as to who might have a, a particular interest in this topic, in this future topic. And if there are multiple people, if you would be willing to kind of, uh, as long as it doesn't form a, a quorum, if you could be kind of a, like an affinity group or something, just um, consider yourself the lead person until we formalize our action on this. Um, if you're willing. We could, we could indeed do that. But, yeah, everyone on board, exactly. So, is there anyone who's especially interested in solar power who would be kind of willing to, um, just to be the, the person we look to, the go-to person, on so the power for us. Jaya, wonderful, thank you very much. Um, on the youth risk behavior survey, 
pounds. Excellent, excellent. Very good. Appreciate that. Um, the co-curricular report may not we may not need to do this with this this is something that we're looking forward to, which will happen in Great. Um, early childhood programming. This is sort of the, I know I'm very interested. You are? Great. Um, and wonderful. Okay. Um, student performance update. That's another one that I think is just being teed up for April. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Can I make a point here? Please. Well, um, kind of, to, to start nosing around, basically. Yeah, I don't think there's a task or something. There's no, there's no formal task. task. This, is in, this is just to figure out who's interested, who can start talking to each other, just to get heads together and, yeah? Do you have anything else? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. You okay with that task? Wonderful. Good, okay. So, I, I think we may have reached, um, believe it or not, the, uh, the end point for our open session. But we still have, for board members and Deborah, um, some executive session time. Um, so at this point, I would just like to thank all of you who are who have stuck it out to the end. David, thanks. Chris, thank you.